Good morning, all. I hope you can hear me right now and the stream's working good. <laughs> oh, or a very good afternoon slash evening, depending on where you're joining us from today. Welcome to the Strategy Stream Talks for API Days Melbourne. Um, my name is Mikhali, um, and I'm a member of the Deloitte Platform Engineering Team, and I will be your MC for the Strategy Stream Talks today. So we've just had a cracker of an opening talk from Mike Munson, and I hope that you really enjoyed it. Um, our session, our morning session here today is all about using APIs to achieve better business performance and better customer outcomes. And yeah, I hope you like what we've got in store for you. So without taking up too much of your time, um, I would like to welcome our first speaker for the strategy stream, on stage. Um, quick reminder, yet again, that throughout this talk, you'd be able to direct all of your questions uh, to, to the right-hand side of the screen in the stage chat. So here we go. Um, our first speaker today is Alan Glickenhaus. He's the IBM Digital Transformation and an API business strategist. You can already see why we've <laughs> sort of gotten you in for the stream, Alan. Um, he's joining us from Waimoma, Florida, and he's here to talk to us about digital and API ecosystems, marketplaces, and platforms. Welcome, Alan. Thank you, Megali. So yeah, let me get my screen sharing here, and then we'll be off and running. Okay, we're close. Does that look good to you? Yep, that looks good to me. Okay, great. So yeah, I'm sorry I can't be there with you or we can't all be together in, in Melbourne. I, I, we were just commenting before the session started how much we love uh, Melbourne. So uh, I'm coming to you from uh, an evening the, the day before uh, here in Florida, I think that is right. Um, so um, the topic I'm gonna uh, join you with today is about digital ecosystems, marketplaces and platforms. So let me, uh, just spend a second and introduce myself. I won't take too long on this. Um, you already heard my title. Basically, what I do is work with businesses around the world, all different industries, all different geographies, um, about what they're trying to do with digital transformation and the API economy. Um, I do it either through one-on-one -on -one workshops or I do it in these API days conferences and other kinds of events. Um, and when I'm not doing that, I'm writing about it. So um, nowadays, without the travel happening, uh, lots of writing is happening. So, um, so I do write lots of things. Uh, I've written over 150 different assets, blogs, papers, you name it. And the categories that I write in are, are at the bottom of the screen here. And if we have time at the end, I'll, I'll uh, go through those. The numbers that are next to that are the number of articles that I've written in each one of the categories. And at the end of this presentation deck, when you get it, um, there'll be live links that you can link to every one of the articles that I've written. So for today's talk, I've basically uh, grabbed a couple of articles that I've written about these topics of ecosystems, marketplaces, and platforms, and put it into a presentation form uh, to share with you. So let's, uh, let's get into that. Um, one of the things I wanted to start with was um, what we call the API journey map. Uh, it, it's, it's a maturity model, and uh, interesting to me anyway. Um, we wrote this, uh, myself and, and a few other IBM uh, folks who are, have good experience in this area, maybe four or five years ago now. Um, and we, we started to look around at what businesses were doing and how they were doing it. And we came up with five stages of maturity. Um, and, and, and I'm not going to spend the time in this session to do that, uh, go through them all. But I did want to point out that the fourth one along the way here, uh, expanding to full digital market solutions, is this set of content that I'm talking about today. It's about ecosystems, marketplaces, and platforms. Um, we do have predictions that go even beyond this, but uh, having done this four or five years ago, I'm kind of happy with myself that we, we managed to uh, see this coming and, uh, and plan for how you can get here. Um, now, the other thing I want to mention at the beginning is you may not be ready to do this right away. There are a few earlier stages in this maturity model, and many of the businesses that I'm speaking to are, are not at the point where they're ready for ecosystems, marketplaces, and platform. Uh, there are other things that tend to happen before that. So I'm happy to have one-on-one -on -one discussions with people uh, who are listening in um, to have a discussion about where you are and, and where you want to be and how you can get there, which is basically what my job is. 
So let's let's get into this. Let's talk about ecosystems. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question. If we were in person, I'd ask you to raise your hand after this. Which scenario requires an ecosystem? So scenario one, we have a car buyer that is shopping for a new car. They research the options and they decide what car they want to buy. Then they go to an, uh, a dealership and they actually purchase the car or they maybe do it online nowadays. Um, and, and that includes the financing for the car as well as obtaining insurance coverage. So that's that's scenario one. Scenario two is somebody who's shopping in a retail store or online or on a, a mobile app, um, and they want to buy a present for their child at, during the holiday season. And, and they know the child wants the new hot toy that comes out every year that everybody must have. Um, and so the retail store sells the, the toy to the consumer. So raise your hand if you think scenario one requires an ecosystem. All right. Now raise your hand if you think scenario two requires an ecosystem. And hopefully, I, I, obviously we can't see you, uh, but uh, um, you raised your hand for both of them. Uh, so they both need ecosystems. The first one is pretty obvious, right? So we, we're talking about an auto purchase, but it also includes researching car options. So there may be something about comparison across multiple different um, auto manufacturers. There's a dealership situation. There's financing, there's insurance, there, there's uh, maybe some other government uh, registration kinds of things that have to happen. A whole bunch of things get put together to solve that, that issue. Um, the second one doesn't seem as obvious, right? So why, why does this one need an ecosystem? You just go into the store and, and buy something. Um, well, if you've ever experienced the hot toy issue, uh, at least here in the US, and I think it's the same everywhere in the world, um, it's not as easy as just walking into the store and buying it. Um, you know, you may have to go to a lot of different stores to find it. The, the keeping it in stock is a challenge. Knowing which store has it um, is a challenge. Uh, and, and then being able to, to get in and, and have it uh, purchased and delivered to you, which may also require um, interaction. So there are multiple players here as well between the manufacturers, the distributors, the shipping and the retail uh, environment. So. I, I, I say at the title, no business is an island. Every business requires other businesses. And, and so, you know, one of the things I'll pose as a question to you is think about what businesses you interact with or that your customers interact with when putting together the solution for themselves. And that's that's the ecosystem that we want to build for um, our APIs to provide a solution for our uh, end users. And, and one of the industries, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a, a, a compliment right now because they're struggling so much right now is the travel industry um, that has done a pretty good job of this. I wouldn't say they're finished yet, but um, if you go to any airline site, if you go to any hotel site, they're always trying to cross sell the other parts of the solution that you need to travel somewhere. So it's air, hotel, rental cars, you know, other things that, that you need, travel insurance may be in there, various things. And, and so, you know, there are many, many examples of, of ecosystems. So thinking about ecosystems, I, I, one of the things I, I, I try to think about is how, how are we doing it and how is it going and where is it going to go after you know, where, where we are today? And so historically, um, we, we used to call ecosystem partnering, right? So it was not the, a fancy word. We, we would partner with another business. And, and there's a business relationship that we would establish between our business and the other business that we're going to become partners and we might take weeks or months to, uh, to outline how we're going to work together, what the financial arrangements are going to be, and, and, and come to an agreement. Um, and then when we're done doing the business side, we do things on the technical side to open up our IT systems so that the other business we're working with can place orders with us or you know whatever the things are that they need to do with us. And again, that would take weeks or months to open up our systems securely, give them the interface, uh, let them try it out, make sure that it works for them, um, make sure that they can only see the things they're supposed to see and, and get them going. And, and then if we want to do it with another partner, we duplicate all of that. It's like we just you know don't really get the benefit of, of scale. So we have weeks or months with the next partner on, on business relationship, weeks or months with the next partner to set them up to access the, the IT systems and, and on and on. So that's where we've been in the past. Now, today... Unfortunately, the business side is still taking weeks or months, right? So we're still, you know, not in, in the automated stage of where we'd like to be with onboarding business partners uh, in this ecosystem. But we have done a pretty good job on the IT side. So if we have 
a supply side partner or a sell side partner, we can uh, you know, create and secure the APIs that we need to make available for that type of a partner uh, uh, situation and pre-test them and pre-set them up and make sure that everything is ready to go. And when the business discussion is uh, finished, maybe the first time it might take us a little while to get this set up. But once we've got these APIs available, we can onboard other partners that come in of that same type very quickly. We just give them access to our developer portal and they can hopefully do self-service onboarding. So we've done a pretty good job on the IT side of moving things forward. Now, looking into the future, which is part of what my strategist role is, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I've never won the lottery yet, so I don't, don't bet on these things, but this is what I'm seeing. Uh, we may continue to do things in days. I mean, we might improve that to hours. Uh, it's not going to make a tremendous difference, um, you know, one way or the other at this point in time, but maybe, maybe eventually we'll get this down to hours uh, or, or even dynamically uh, being done. But, but for now, let's just say that's still staying the same. But we want to get the business side down to days as well. We need to be able to, if we're really going to have a, a, a dynamic uh, and growing ecosystem with lots of partners, Weeks and months is just not going to cut it. And so we also like to be able to replicate that so that once we have that kind of a relationship with a uh, another partner, that the second and third ones that come along don't take the same amount of time that we can move this forward. And the question is, how are we going to do that? And so we're going to come back to, to that thought um, when we get into this next section here. Right. So that's ecosystems. Let, let's let's. You know, switch topics briefly here and now get into marketplaces. And so if you think about um, marketplaces, um, you know, in general, marketplaces are where buyers and sellers come together to transact some kind of business. And so when we think about this in relation to APIs, um, it, it's, it's, you know, API consumption or AP, transacting uh, business through APIs. And, and, and so that's, that's the kind of marketplace that we're thinking about. Typically, I'm not going to get into the technology here. You, you'd build a marketplace with at least part of it being based on the developer portal that an API management platform would make available. So when I speak to businesses, and a lot of businesses are coming to me and saying that we want to be a marketplace, um, the first thing I ask them is to define what they mean. Uh, be, because what I'm seeing is there are some businesses that, that are really talking about marketplaces in a way that many people would not use that term. Um, some businesses are saying that they they just want to provide their APIs to external parties, that that these partner or public audiences will use their APIs, and they're viewing that as a marketplace because they're externally transacting uh, API consumption with another business. Um, some people would say that's not a marketplace because they're the only provider of APIs. It's their company to hopefully for them many consumers of these APIs. Uh, so you can say that is a marketplace or you can say that isn't a marketplace. Uh, I'm not going to argue um, you know, against either, either one, um, but there are businesses out there that are saying uh, that, that that's what they, they want to be, be uh, as a marketplace. And, and that's fine if that's meeting your needs. Um, many businesses are, that I'm seeing are saying that they want to do what's, what I'm referring to as more of an advanced marketplace where it's not just their APIs, but many businesses' APIs uh, that are gonna be in this marketplace. And, and here's a scenario, this is a real company that's done this, I'm not gonna mention their name, um, but, uh, but they are doing this today. And so um, they are a, a business, they're a bank, actually a commercial bank, and, and they have customers uh, that are using their APIs today. And, and commercial banks and commercial banking customers tend to have a very good relationship. They, they have a trust relationship. The commercial banking APIs are used in the business processes of these other companies that they're dealing with. Um, but these other companies don't just need banking APIs. They may need other things uh, that banks just don't do. And, and, and so um, recognizing this, there's an opportunity for the commercial bank to host a marketplace. And so what they will do or they have done um, is vetting and onboarding of third-party APIs and third-party companies to deal with. And so, you know, and these are just examples of the kinds of things that people might, might need. They might need shipping. And so there might be some companies that do shipments that provide APIs and the commercial bank bets these companies to be sure that they are reputable companies that they would recommend to their customers. And they can put their APIs in the API marketplace. 
and maybe there's other payment uh, companies that are out there and other API products from other companies. And for each one of these, they vet and onboard these other companies to be sure that they are reputable companies with good APIs that they want to recommend to their good commercial customers who trust in them. Um, the, the thing that's important here is this trust relationship, right? They're, they're saying that these are good companies. That, that's going to allow us to avoid that weeks or months situation of each one of these individual partnering scenarios having to play out with the customers on the right that want to use these services. And so they're then uh, already vetted and onboarded by the, the commercial bank. And then when the customers come in, they find the whole suite of APIs that they need in this marketplace and, and everybody's happy, right? They can get um, their capabilities that they need. The commercial bank is making some kind of a monetization model. We'll talk more about that in a second um, for you know, how these things can all work. And this is what most people think of as an API marketplace. So I want to spend a few more minutes on, on this topic because it's just unbelievable how many people are telling me today that they want to be API marketplaces. Um, and, and and again, in the context of many providers to many consumers. And, and, and so if you are thinking this, and if you're listening to this session, you probably are, um, then um, there are some questions you need to ask yourself uh, as, as to how, how you want to run your marketplace and why you should be chosen to be the you know, why will an API provider want to put their APIs in your marketplace? And there's really two answers to that question. One is you have a lot of consumers that are already looking there. Um, and, and the second one is that you may have some kind of synergy in offerings that you work together with them to provide a complete solution, like the travel industry example, where it's hotels and airlines and rental cars together. There may be um, a, a good use case there. In many cases, you're not going to have a lot of API consumers looking in your marketplace when you don't have a lot of API providers there. So it's kind of a chicken and the egg thing, um, you know, situation where you can't um, get a lot of consumers looking there because you don't have a lot of APIs there. And, and so the synergy tends to be the early scenario. I mentioned monetization model for your marketplace. That again, there are many different ways you can go about this. That, you know, if you make it free for people to put their APIs in your marketplace, that that you know you, you may not think that's really generating revenue for you, but you'll then get many API, API providers, which may attract many API consumers. That increases the consumption for everybody. So that that may drive independent revenue for everybody. So free is is a is a very good model. If you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you may directly charge an API provider based on some metric, whether it's the views that they get or referrals or how much uh, resources they're consuming or some value-added services we'll talk about in a minute. Um, or maybe you'll have some kind of a financial arrangement with them that based on the usage of their APIs by these consumers, you get some amount of money out of the revenue that they're generating. Uh, so, so there's lots of different models that, that might play here. Um, the next thing you want to think about is the value-added services that, that you want to provide to these other API companies. And, and a very famous uh, marketplace right now is Programmable Web, which many people use to go find APIs. Um, but it's really just a pass-through. They don't do anything to vet or onboard, onboard uh, these other um, vendors. And they just basically redirect you to the, uh, to the portal for these other uh, API providers. So it's really just a pass-through kind of a situation. You might do something to host the other providers' APIs directly in your portal or on your gateway and do some value add, like perform rate limiting and security checks and things like that before you pass them onward to, to what they're doing. And you might even provide billing or analytics or some other functions as well. Um, probably the most important question is, what are you doing about verifying the API providers that come on your marketplace? What are you saying about these companies and what's your liability if somebody uses these companies and something bad happens? And, and, and the answer might be you're, you're saying nothing about these other um, uh, providers, right? That anyone can come host on your site, kind of like programmable web where you, know, you can just define your API there um, and, and, and you have no liability. You're just basically you know, being a, a place you know, that has a, a list of APIs or you might provide more value as a verification that they are going to have some kind of quality of service and that they're a reputable business that's not going to steal things from the people that consume their APIs. Um, 
and whatever other criteria that you, you set forth for being a, a part of your marketplace. The more you do for this, the more value you're providing to the consumers and the more value you can get by some kind of monetization model from the people that are in your marketplace. So these are fairly complicated legal and, and, and um, um, financial and, and you know, reputation kinds of questions that your business needs to think about uh, as you're starting to put together the thought of doing an API marketplace. So, so with that, let me stop talking about marketplace and move on to the last uh, of the three topics that I wanted to talk about, um, which is a platform, right? So uh, platform is an interesting word. Uh, it's one that um, in the API sense, if you Google API platform, you'll get lots of different definitions that have nothing to do with each other. Um, um, we and IBM and many other vendors uh, talk about API platforms all the time. We we have a product that is an API management platform. It's called API Connect. It does lifecycle management of APIs and has the developer portal and the gateway and all those kinds of things that you would use to make an API. That's not what I'm talking about. So so that kind of a platform, uh, my management would love for me to chat with you about, but but that's not the topic today. So. Um, so today's topic is about definition number two, which is an organization that brings together these independent groups through this consumable service or API that creates a foundation for interaction between them. And this definition is, is you know, the one that we want to talk about. Right. So there's a link here on this page to where I got it from. Um, and, and so this is the kind of platform that that uh, I wanted to discuss. And. And in some ways, as you can see from this definition, what I'm describing to you is that a digital platform in, in some ways is equal to this digital ecosystem, the, the, the various companies that you want to bring together that supply a, a complete solution for a customer and the marketplace where they can access these things to put the solution together. Right. So this platform is the place that they go to do that. And this is the most common approach for platforms that, that at least I'm, I'm seeing uh, people think about. Um, the goal is to use the marketplace to, to get these new uh, customers and new opportunities and improve the number of customers that, that you, can, you can reach out to and, and, and get as customers. Uh, the platform is where the consumers are and where they want to be. And so you want to be there. And, and that's the desired um, you know, place. And for many businesses, this is the ultimate goal, right? They want to be this digital platform that uh, that people come to to get these solutions. Um, there is a, another option, uh, option two here, where I say a digital platform is actually greater than the sum of the digital ecosystem and API marketplace. And, and this is the kind of scenario that you see in, in some uh, small number of vendors that are out there, the, the Ebays of the world, the Amazon uh, marketplace kinds of things where they're providing a set of services in a particular industry segment, in this case, it's um, e-commerce. Um, and, and you as, as a tenant, as a business, can build your entire business on top of their services, that, that they are not only gonna be providing you with these things, but you're gonna run your business on their services. And, and this, of course, is an even greater situation than, than the first one that I, I talked about. Right? So. Um, so when you might, uh, as a business, start to think about the, the capabilities that you have that you can provide and encapsulate as microservices, provide access through APIs, and allow other businesses to use these as part of their execution of their business models. And, and that's a very strong position to be in as well. So obviously, all of these um, concepts, the ecosystem, the marketplaces, and the platforms are all you know very good places to be and where many businesses want to be uh, as they move forward. Uh, and there are businesses that are doing this already, right? I mentioned a few just now, and here's here's one, um, a bank, DBS, if you're not familiar with them, um, they're, they're based, at, this uh, situation is based out of Singapore. Um, they have done things to focus on consumer orientation for particular consumer journeys that need banking. And one of the situations that I, I see these kinds of su successful businesses doing is getting out of the what do we provide as a business perspective and getting into the mind of what is the consumer trying to do. And, and in this case, they're trying to buy a house. Uh, another scenario might be trying to buy a car, right? So, so whatever these things are, some aspect of buying a house needs banking. 
But there are many other things in buying a house that, that are beyond just what a bank does. And so they've identified different home buying scenarios. Uh, they help the, the consumer, the, the person who's planning to, to buy a house or move uh, on, on finding the house and, and setting up um, you know, everything they need to, to then be moved, to renovate, to clean, to get the utilities, to um, digital home solutions, all the things that, that you might want to do. And by the way, have a local bank uh, or a bank uh, situation for the move uh, in your new location, right? And, and so these are the kind of things that I recommend that you think about. Don't think about the products that you provide. Think about the consumers of your products and the bigger journey that they're trying to put together. And personally, myself, I just recently moved uh, to my home in, in Florida, and I wish this had, had existed for me because having to put together the solution myself for finding movers and and you know, getting everything set up with um, you know my my uh, insurance and and uh, you know the uh, the local bank that I wanted to find and all these other things was quite a challenge. And I I had to put that solution together myself versus having a one stop shop kind of a thing like BBS is offering. So so think about that as as you're thinking about ecosystems, marketplaces, and platforms. So let me wrap it up. I think I'm just about on time here. Um, think about the businesses next door, what you're most likely to uh, want to partner with and what APIs you need for them. Think about the marketplace situation. Should you be one? Should you manage one? Should you be in one? You know, what kind of situation are you wanting to set up and what kind of liability are you willing to take on? And then platforms. Is that really one you, what you want to be? And if so, how, how do you get there? Think about the roadmap for how you get there. Um, this is a pretty advanced topic, right? and, and if you are not doing this yet, if you're not ready to do this yet, that is not unusual, okay? Don't feel like you're behind. Uh, people that are doing this now are actually pretty much ahead. Um, so where do you want to go? And just quickly, I'll run through these last slides because I am over time. Um, there are three slides of backup links that, uh, that will, you'll get when, um, when you get this deck uh, downloaded from the API Days site. So I'm just gonna thumb through them right now and finish slightly over time. And uh, I will stop sh sharing the screen. There we go, okay. That was brilliant, Alan. Thank you so much. Um, I definitely learned a lot of things that I wasn't aware of before. So thanks for that. You're welcome. <laughs> um, Again, to our viewers on stream right now, please feel free to toss all of your questions for Alan into the state chat. Um, and while we're waiting for those, Alan, I was just wondering, um, you'd mentioned tactics to build uh, business relationships a lot quicker than how we normally do them today, so months to days. Um, yeah. Was there, would you want wanted to elaborate on that beyond yeah, sort of building digital yeah. platforms? You know, these 25 minute sessions are challenging, <laughs> right? So, so uh, you know, there's not gonna be a one size fits all answer to that question. There's gonna be the person or company that you deal with that needs a special situation. But, but, but in the marketplace scenario, the idea is that you generate standard terms and conditions for a, a partner that wants to deal with with you know a particular provider, right? So so I'm not doing the one-off negotiation with every business that comes along. I'm I'm saying this is the price. This is the 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 way we offer it to market. Whether it's a tiered solution or uh, you know one of the various options for monetization that that exists, and, and you can choose from these. Uh, and, and so I can onboard myself if I choose one of those standard options it's the person who wants to negotiate a better deal uh or, or something unique that that's still going to be the the weeks or months person but and maybe a big one right you know if you're dealing with the your major supplier they're not going to be the, the the person that does that but when you're dealing with mass um situations um you know it, it's often um you you can pick any of these providers and and, and they all kind of have similar terms and conditions right so so that's that's the thinking is to be able to have some off the shelf offerings that 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 people would would use. Sure. Um, not going to lie. Uh, oh, I think we've just got a quick question on the chat here. Um, I'm just looking at the time here and thinking about. All right, let's quickly do this. Um, change, so Febby asks: changes in running system architecture will be a lot for using APIs. Any suggestion for this issue? What is the best approach to start those changes? 
in system architecture for uh, so um yeah the 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 best thing that, that i recommend to people um is um don't <laughs> don't don't change your system architecture right um think of, think about the apis from the consumer perspective and not the provider perspective and if you think about what the consumer wants you can hide the complexity of your system architecture from them. It, it, what I see a lot of businesses making mistakes with is that they build the APIs based on their system architecture and it's complicated. And, and they expose that complicated architecture to the developer, which is not okay, but it might be slightly okay for your internal developers, but it's definitely not okay for a partnering kind of a scenario, right? So. So you don't want to expose your backend system architectural structure or anything outside. So think about what does a consumer need to tell you if not knowing anything about your backend systems. I, I don't want to run too much over here, but but um, the example I use is retail, right? If, if I want to ch uh, check my order status on a package that's being delivered to me, there are a lot of retail systems in, in the backend that, that have to get involved in that. And I could expose a whole bunch of different APIs to a developer that's writing a check order status function. I don't want to do that. I want to have one API that's check order status, and it needs two parameters. Who am I and what's my order number? And if I tell you that, you can figure out by accessing all the different systems in your back end what the answer is and give me back that answer. And if you do things from that consumer orientation rather than the architecture or provider orientation, you'll end up having good APIs that are backward compatible, easy to use, and you can onboard a lot more uh, consumers of those APIs. If you deal with uh, all the back ends and expose them, then you're gonna have a problem uh, in maintainability, in, in difficulty to use, and your architecture is going to have to be changed like you were describing in the question, right? So, so you know, it's a lengthy answer and a, a long topic that we can talk a lot about, but um, sure. Sure. orientation is important. Thank you so much for that. That yeah. I think that really cleared it up. Um, and of course, if um, if people have any more questions for Alan following this, then um, I would encourage you to get in touch with him. Alan, if you're happy to share maybe your socials um, on the yeah, chat it's all or on, anything. Um, yeah, I'm on LinkedIn and, and Twitter. Yep. Um, so yeah, just you know, look me up and, and connect with me, absolutely. Sure, thank you yep. so much again. Um, so yep, thanks again to Alan Glickenhaus. Uh, you've kicked the strategy stream off amazingly. Thank you. Um, thank you. And, all viewers, again, um, if you have any more questions for Alan, please please feel free to toss them to him on his socials. Um, so, yep, let's keep rocking and rolling, I suppose. Thank you so much, Alan. Yep, bye. <laughs> have a wonderful evening.